Hello students, in today's video we're going to work on estimating with finite sums. So let's get started. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple easy problems just to kind of get you going and we'll talk about how we're going to use these now. So a car drives at a constant speed uh, 55 miles per hour for three hours. How far does it travel? So hopefully in your head you're just going, well, 55 times 3, so that's 165. Now, what we're going to do really quick is take a look at the graph of that. So here we have a line in red where it's a constant speed of 55. So a car is going to go for 55 miles per hour for three hours. So it's going to be right around here. So what happens here is we could draw a rectangle from here to three. And if I wanted to find that distance again, or find the area of this rectangle, why don't we just multiply 3 by 55? And we'd find out that we would get 165. So what we're slowly trying to do here is start to look at integrals, which is a word we haven't used too much yet. But you could easily answer the question of how fast that car was going in three hours. Now, what we did here with this picture is I wanted to take it so you could look at a visual of another way to get this answer. So that may not make a whole lot of sense, but bear with me. We're going to keep going and do a couple more problems that are going to make it a little easier. So a particle starts at x equals 0 and moves along the x-axis with velocity v of t equals 9 minus t squared for t greater than or equal to 0 approximately where is the particle at t equals 3. So now this is going to be a little bit different because here we're asking you to tell me where the particle is. So what's the the displacement? So substituting 3 into this velocity is just going to give us the velocity at 3 seconds, not the displacement. And so we haven't taught you how to find an integral, which is the opposite of a derivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some pictures to help us figure that out. So we're going to look at the graph, which we see here, and it says at 3 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for 3 seconds, which is right here. And unfortunately, we can't find the area under this curve or under this line like we did in the previous problem, where we just drew a rectangle to find that entire length from 0 seconds to 3 hours. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use what's called rectangular approximation methods. So now we have the LRAM or left hand endpoint rectangular approximation method, the MRAM or the midpoint rectangular approximation method, and the RRAM, right, right endpoint rectangular approximation method. So basically all these three methods are very similar. They're just different on what endpoints they use. Now, the way we do this is we split the area into rectangles of equal length, and then we calculate the area of each triangle, and then add those areas. So let's go back to our original problem here, 9 minus t squared. So what we're going to do here is we are going to find the area We're going to find the area, so I'm going to change our window a little bit so it's more specific to what we want. So we're going to go from negative 4 to 4. And our y value is going to go from negative 1 to 10. Okay. So this gives us a better picture of what we're trying to do. Now if we're trying to find the displacement um, from in three seconds, we're going to draw some right, right rectangles right now. So here's how this works. If we want a left endpoint rectangles, what we're going to do is we are going to start at the leftmost point. So notice here that we have we're going from 0 to 3 seconds. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into rectangles that are one second long or one long. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle that because we're going to use a left endpoint rectangle we're going to start on the leftmost side and we're going to go up to the height at the left endpoint. So here we are and then we're going to go one long. So here you go, here's the left rectangle. And notice if we were using a right endpoint, what would happen is we would start on the right side. So since our rectangle is supposed to be one wide, so this wide, a right endpoint, if you look at where I stop, that's where the right side of the rectangle hits the curve. So that's a right rectangle endpoint. If we want to the left, notice we're going to go as high as it can until it hits the graph on the left side. And we're going to go as wide as we had determined, which is 1. So we're going to do the same thing here. And we're going to go to the left endpoint. So that's right here. And the final one. Notice I'm going to go up until the left side hits the graph right there. So this is the left endpoint rectangular area approximation method. So what we're going to do here is we know that each side is 1, 1, 1. Now we need to find this height, this height, and this height. And the way we do that is we use the endpoints that we were given. So, we know that the function is 9 minus t squared. And we know that our left endpoint here begins at 0, begins at 1, and begins at 2. These are where our left endpoints begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that value in. So we have 9 minus 0 squared. We're going to do 9. Well, that's just to clarify, that's 9. And then we have 9 minus 1 squared, which is 8. We have 9 minus 2 squared, which is 5. So now we know the heights of each of these pieces. We know this height goes up to 9, this one goes up to 8, and this one goes up to 5. We could also have counted that, but I just want to make sure you know where we got these numbers from. So the area of the tallest rectangle is 9, so again we're using the left rectangular approximation method. So we basically have 9 plus, we have the height 9 times 1 because that's a width plus 8 times 1 plus 5 times 1 and that gives us a area proc area under the curve which was 9 plus 8 plus 5 so we have 23 so that's our left area rectangular model approximation so what we're going to do now is I'm going to clear the annotations real quick. And what we're going to do, just to show you how this really works, I'm going to take all of these images and make them a little bit more clear so you guys can see. And I'm going to change the colors. So, notice here, these are the left area rectangular, left endpoint. So we're going to use the right this time, but this time we're going to do it in red. So you'll see here, instead of using the left endpoint, we're going to use the right. And as soon as I hit that line, like we hit the curve here, I'm going to go over to the designated portion. We're going to do that again. And we're going to do it a final time from 0, 
which actually just turns out to be this, which is really just a line. Because those are the endpoints I hit on the right side. Oops, put that graph back up there. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do the same exact thing for the right area model, but we need to determine those heights again. So the height here is what we're looking for. The height here is what we're looking for. And then we already know the height here. So we know that we wanted three rectangles, and they're each one space apart. So we know the right area here, the height here is for three. We know the area here is two. And we know the one here is one. So let's go ahead and substitute those in. So for the right area model, right rectangular approximation method, we have the spacing is one times the height. So for the first one, if we're starting on the right side, that's zero. Second one should be that, let's calculate that again, because this looks a little off. For this middle rectangle that I'm kind of shading, you'll notice here it doesn't exactly quite get to six, but I think part of my issue is that our rectangles are a little off. Yeah, so our rectangle is a little off. Let me make that adjustment. This rectangle should be a little bit shorter. There you go. Let's make sure we're all aligned. Okay. So let's make one more adjustment because this is still a little off. The middle rectangle should be ending at two. The height needs to change, perfect. And this one should change as well. Perfect, okay. So now our rectangles are right. So now if you look at the middle rectangle, which again shifted because I had to change, that went up to five, that was at five, plus the last one so that distance is one, and that height was eight before we moved it. So really our height, our area here is 13. Now, finally, clear this annotations one more time. We're going to do the last one, and this is called the middle. So the middle endpoint rectangular approximation method. So this time, I'm going to clear the page because I think that was a little confusing last time. Actually, I want the So what happens with the middle approximation method, just to make sure we're clear. We'll do a little extra here just to make sure you see it. Our usual endpoints were stopping at one, two, and three. Now since we're doing the middle endpoint, it's really not the endpoint, but the middle, what we're gonna do here is instead of going the full way and drawing it all the way up, I'm going to go halfway because the whole point is that we want it, we want the area to have the same height as the middle. So from the middle, we're going to go up until it touches the endpoint, which I just did, and now I'm going to expand it. This is the height that we're looking for. For the next one, we're going to go to the midpoint, go all the way up to the graph where it touches, and then go right, 
We're going to do it one last time. We're going to go up to the middle, go all the way up to the top, and then move over. So we know we're at that appropriate height, and we've gone the appropriate distance. So to clarify even further, we know we know that this height right here is one half. This height is three halves because it's one and a half, and this half is five halves. So 0 0.5, three halves, and five halves. It changes to a half because that bothers me that they're different. So these are our heights. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the MRAM, which is the distance is one. Now our height here is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to do a quick side note so we can calculate that area. So here it's 9 minus t squared. So we're going to do 9 minus 1 half squared. So that turns out to be 1 fourth. So 9 minus 1 fourth. That turns out to be 35 fourths. This becomes 9 minus 3 halves squared. So that's 9 minus 9 fourths. So that's going to be 27 fourths. And then finally, 9 minus 5 halves quantity squared, which turns out to be 9 minus 25 fourths. So that turns out to be 11 fourths. So now we have our heights. So our areas here are going to be not 1 times 35 fourths plus 1 times 27 fourths plus 1 times 11 fourths. So that turns out to be, sorry I'm doing the math in my head, it's 35 plus 27, that's 40, that's 62. 62 plus that 11 is going to be 73 fourths, which is approximately 1, that's 33, that's 18. It's approximately 18.25. So if you look at our areas here, we have, let me get my pen so we can mark this up, we have 23 from our left, we have 13 from our height, and we have approximately 18.25 from our middle. So the thing to keep in mind here is that your middle is always going to give you the best balance between the left and the right. So if you figure that it's not coming out right or the middle is not in between then you did something wrong. So that's how we do these error approximation methods. What happens here is we chose three rectangles. If you choose more, then obviously you're going to have more rectangles, which means your graph is going to be more accurate. Because as you can tell, we left a lot of things missing from these corners on the upper, or above the rectangles, and on the side. So, let's try one more. So 5 minus t squared, t equals 5. So we're going to get rid of this one and look at the new one. Here you go. Now we're going to try and streamline this a little bit. Notice that this goes up to 5. I'm going to mark the point for 5 here. And we're going to do rectangles. Again, you can do as many as you like. I like to keep them one, one unit long or one unit wide. But a lot of times they'll tell you, do n intervals or four intervals or what have you. So to make these easier we're going to do just the middle approximation. So again we're going to go here's one unit we're going to go halfway I'm going to go up until it hits the graph and then move over. Go halfway we're going to go all the way up until it hits the graph and then I'm going to move over. Same thing halfway all the way up 
and then over. Halfway, all the way up, and then move over. Halfway, all the way up, and then move over. So now we have our graphs. As usual, I have to move this again. There you go. Okay. So we know our distances, our widths, they're one. They're all one. So let's find our heights. So we know the equation is 5t minus t squared. So we're going to do 5 times 1 half minus t squared, or minus 1 half squared. So that's going to be 5 halves minus 1 fourth. So that's going to be 10 fourths minus 1 fourth. So that's 9 fourths. We're going to do the next one. And that's going to be 3 halves minus 3 halves squared. So that's going to be 15 halves minus 9 fourths. So that's 30 fourths minus 9 fourths. So that's 21 fourths. We're going to do 5 times 5 halves <clears throat> minus 5 halves squared. That turns out to be 25 halves minus 25 fourths. It's going to be 25 fourths. Five times seven halves minus seven halves squared. It's going to turn out to be 35 halves minus 49 fourths. So that's going to be 70 fourths minus 49 fourths. It's going to be 21 fourths. Notice it's starting to look a little bit more symmetrical on our uh, heights if you take a look. So 5 halves times 9 halves minus 9 halves squared. So that turns out to be 45 halves minus 81 halves. That's going to be 9 fourths. And so now we have our heights. We have our heights for all of our middle rectangles. So now to find the area. So the area is equal to 1 times 9 fourths plus 1 times 21 fourths. So I think you'll understand if I just write 1 once and do 9 fourths plus 21 fourths plus 25 fourths, plus 21 fourths again, plus 9 fourths. So this is where we're at. So we have 9 plus 9, that's 18. And then we have 21 plus 21, so that's 42. So that turns out to be 60 plus the 25, so that's 85 fourths is our area for the middles. Now, moving forward, we're going to do one more, and I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. So notice here that it gives us two different boundaries. It says from A equals 1 to B equals 3. So now we're looking from this perspective. So from 1 to 3. So we could use the rectangles here. But here's another method that we could look at. We could draw more rectangles if we wanted to and go that route. And we'll get a pretty good approximation of it. Notice how we're changing this now into quarters. Every rectangle is a quarter. And notice how we don't have a lot of blank space here. So we're getting pretty much every single area from 1 to 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rectangles. 
you'll notice we use the right side endpoint. So you can see, just I gotta move the rec the drawing again. So this time we use the right because it made more sense to. Here's the right. Actually, let's see this in blue so you see. Here, 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 here. We're not going to do all of these, but I wanted to show you how we would approach these, especially on such a smaller graph. Fortunately for you, I'm going to show you how to do this using an app. But for now, I wanted you to learn how to do this because you will be exposed to it. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.